Welcome to KSP. This is the beta. Today, I'm going to properly record something I did earlier in the week, and that is we're going to fly the Kerbal X on stock to the moon, land it, and come back. This is a stock craft that comes to the game. It's been in it since, oh gosh, whenever the 2.5 meter parts came out, way back when, uh, before my time. But I'm gonna illustrate that with the recent changes to the mainsail engine and poodle engine in point two four, this thing will conduct a mission. These little lander legs up here are not just for decoration anymore, so let's go. All right, so you notice that I had to fire the engines and then decouple the launch clamps. That is by design. I didn't modify that or tweak that or anything else. This is strictly stock. Along with explosions and other fun antics. So I have to start on just a little bit. Um, Steven, who, Twitchy, who runs the KSP Facebook group that I'm in, claims I threw down a gauntlet for this. It really wasn't a gauntlet. It was more a challenge. But not in, I don't know. <laughs> His sense of humor is completely different from mine, so... I hit that, this probably was just his humor bleeding out into the video, which was rather interesting to watch. It was uh, very enlightening. It was, took guts to throw out everything that he did in there, including the stuff that he did wrong. It takes guts to say, hey, look, this is how I totally screwed this mess up. Because most people are like, hey, I didn't screw this up, man. What are you talking about? So, let's do gravity turn, 100% throttle. Now, it looks like I just did a normal gravity turn to start, but really there's more to it than that. Because I don't just hold it 45 the entire time until my apoapsis is out of atmosphere. Now I do a little bit more of a nuanced thing. But the initial part is just straight up 45 degrees and that's it. So when I get to 20,000 meters, I'll heel over to procreate and then hold that. So I do like a stepping process on how I do the turns. Now we'll turn more, so we're a little bit more of a shallow arc. And then when I get to around 26, 27k, I'll just tell Jeb to maintain prograde and that'll be it. I think I'll just do that now. Okay, so my time in apoapsis is going away pretty fast, so I can back off the throttle a bit. Because I'm not really looking for height, I'm looking for how shallow this arc gets. The higher my speed is once I hit apoapsis, the less of a circularization burn I have to do. This is already shaping up pretty good. So let's go to 70 something. Yeah, let's do that. So right now, it looks to be about. 400 something meters per second short. That's okay. I'm losing speed, so it'll be it'll definitely be more than that when I get up there. But uh, that's not a big deal. Luckily, like almost 500 at this point. All right, now that we are out of atmosphere. Might hear some background music. Don't have a whole lot of fuel left in this thing. But I should have enough to circularize. Have some left over for beginning the push to the moon. And we're going to go to 10 seconds and go do it. Actually, I'm back off a little bit. No, nope, I want to keep it not. off some. I think I think it'll be like 22 something in order to do this. Almost, not quite. Not quite. 
almost there. And it's almost over. But... All right, we'll just call it good. All right, so what do we got left in this tank? Not much. I've actually done better than this before. That's all right. Ah, that's almost in a perfect spot to do the moon mission. Almost. That's not going to work. It needs to be about 800, some 850 or so meters per second. So let's wheel that around. Oh, my nose are all tripping and dancing. That actually might work good. That right there. Assuming I can get it. Just like that. So it just caps the torque into RCS. This thing is a bit ponderous to turn when it's just when you have the center lifter still attached to the rocket. If you don't have thrust vectoring, mainsail thrust vectoring is pretty pretty stout because it makes a lot of power. And I think it's a degrees worth of vectoring or half a degree. I know the poodle is something like two degrees or something, which makes it good for asymmetrical landers and stuff to a point. Alright, so we're going to go 45 seconds away from our node after I turn towards it. It's odd that the I was pointing in the right direction and all of a sudden I'm like a couple degrees off. Okay, let's do no that. seconds, 21 seconds to finish the burn. Like that. So yeah, the monopropellant that's contained in here is worthless. It's dead weight. It's extra payload mass that we don't need because we have no thrusters on this stupid spacecraft to use it. It'd be nice if they had added RCS thrusters to the spacecraft, because then you could <laughs> you could make up for some uh, maneuvering inefficiencies, conducting the mission and whatnot, made the moon landing a bit easier, so on and so forth. But no, they didn't do that. Okay, now I'll sneak into this. Oh. Okay, that was a mistake. I hit Z instead of Shift. So now I have to use a bit of my propellant to correct that mistake. And you don't have a whole lot of stuff left to do things like that. Oh gosh. I'm still going to botch this mission up. Hopefully that doesn't totally screw me up. So if it does, then, then I'm a scrub. I have no business playing this game if I can't do this. This is very possible. I've done it three times in a row. Twice on the beta and once in on .25, which is a little bit more of a headache to do because you lack some of the extra piloting abilities that you get with the beta, but still worked. All right, so what's it say my apoap or periapsis is low enough. So when I get there, I will just burn retrograde really hard. And because I'm starting this on day one, no time at all, I pretty much get the same landing spot. I come right over the crater and I land. So let's do this. I can't even time accelerate at this point because there. Okay. Burn. Go ahead and turn ourselves so we're aligned at the horizon. 
pretty soon I'm going to come down a nice little shallow arc. Let's go for somewhere over this way. This looks interesting over here. It's kind of by the uh, canyon. I should be able to have a nice view. Can't time accelerate a whole lot because I'm that stupid low to the moon. Void would be awesome for trying to figure out if I'm ready to smash into terrain or anything, but uh, yeah, I'm below 5,000 meters. Alright, so that's a low point. So now I'm away from the terrain. Looks like I'm probably going to want to put on the brakes really quick and come down in that crater up over here. Which actually may be a bad thing because that means I'm at a lower altitude, which means I'll have to climb a bit more in order to get out of the moon's, uh, get back into orbit. And I hate gravity or suicide burns, so I don't do them. Suicide burns are just that, they're suicide. As Twitchy demonstrated. But I don't want to do too early. It's so there's a balancing act I have to do. So let's say we go here. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to... Okay, now I want to turn you down some. Alright, are we stable? Are we stable? We're on the moon. Alright, cool. Let's get Bill this time. I go Bill. Alright, he doesn't go for splat. Excellent. He gets to look around a bit. I go. Yay. There we go. Shot of him all being all happy that he made it to the moon. Now, that's not the hard part. The hard part is getting back. Actually, I think I'll keep that tone down a bunch. about 340 meters per second away from making orbit. It's like 540, 560 or something. I can't even time accelerate. What is with this? Okay, let's go back to map view. Burn. Stated I've done this better once, but uh, this is doable. This is literally how tight you have to make it. I mean, yeah. Now I have 88 units of liquid fuel 
the poodle burns a little bit less than six units of fuel at full throttle. So if I take my 88 divided by six, that tells me how many seconds worth of burn I need to do this maneuver, or I have available to do the maneuver. So as a way of figuring out delta V, not in terms of meters per second, but how long you can keep the throttle up. I think this is about a 11 second burn. Or so. Depending on how well you do it. You can burn 11 seconds in some totally crazy place and end up screwing yourself up pretty bad. So let's clicky there. Let's clicky here again. And see now I have burn atmosphere, so I can actually dial back on that burn some to make it more efficient. So I can go like 30 kilometers in 11 seconds. 275 meters per second, 11 seconds of burn. So full throttle is between 5 and 6. So if I just take 6 seconds, or 6 units of fuel per second, I get 66 units of fuel. Well, I have 88, so that's a good thing. So effectively, at this point, it's just a simple matter of waiting for this burn to hit, and then we go. Which at this point is going to take forever, because we are so very low to the moon. And I can do only like five, 10 times acceleration, which means that 16 minutes is going to go by pretty quick. So even with some mistakes that I made, uh, there is enough delta V capacity in the spacecraft that you can pull this off. It's just really difficult. Well, for me anyway. That's kind of close. <laughs> I always get really nervous about these low lunar orbits because if you end up hitting, it's you're hitting at the speed. It doesn't even have me in orbit view. Getting some solo to the moon. This really doesn't serve much of a point, and except to drill in efficient maneuver planning, good flying. I'm still nervous about the stinking surface here. It teaches. It, it drives home a bunch of concepts that good pilots should learn, or aspiring pilot, pilots should learn in KSP to help them fly the game better. And there is the sun. So very low over the horizon. So it's not really bragging rights, it's just basically a litmus test saying, oh, you think you're a good flyer. Try this. If you are a good flyer, you will be able to accomplish this. I promise. If you're not that good at flying, you will have issues trying to do this. Simple as that. So I'll just burn till the maneuver's done, and that'll be it. Yeah, see, 5.17 units of fuel. Okay. So, let's see, yeah, not that much, so we can burn a little bit here, that's good enough. Now, I haven't bothered really trying to get this thing down to KSC, I mean I've kind of expended a bit of effort figuring it out, but it's difficult and I'm not really good at trying to do that from coming from the moon anyway, so I'm not going to bother. So let's just get home, shall we? I guess the reason why this appealed to me after not having done it for so long was... Anyone can slap together a thousand ton monster rocket and say, look at this cool thing that I just drew together. 
And yeah, there's some skill in making huge monster rockets and getting them to fly without killing yourself. There is something to be said for that. However, there's also something to be said about being able to do a mission with not a lot of parts and not a lot of Delta V and still being able to tell the story about it. Efficiency trumps, uh, I guess you'd call it e -peens, I guess. I kind of don't want to be crude about it, but that's... I don't know, anyone can throw a million parts at the screen and say, look at this cool thing I just built, and then hyper-edit it in orbit because it won't fly. It's, I, I kind of... I, I got into that mindset for a while, actually. I was like, oh, it makes things bigger and bigger and bigger, and then I was like, after a while, why am I doing this? It doesn't really do anything. The things don't go anywhere once I get them into orbit. They just kind of sit there and look pretty, and that's it. So, why bother? Now, really, the challenge is you just got to get the crew capsule and the crew home. That's it. You don't have to get the whole spacecraft home. I'm only doing so because I do have a bit of fuel left over, and I can throttle this engine up to slow the splashdown rate to a point where the engine and fuel tank don't rip themselves apart when they hit the water. But it's not a requirement. I just did it because I can. There's others that can say, well, look, I just got myself into to KSC with this. It's like, well, that's good, because I couldn't. Because <laughs> I suck. Are we going to flip over now? Surprisingly not. Outstanding. So, I was pretty far from KSC. Uh, I guess if someone can do this and land at KSC, they are a better pilot because I have trouble trying to get back here after doing a mission. But, yeah, anyway, that's totally... Uh, I can't even think today. I haven't had my coffee, and I haven't eaten breakfast yet, so I probably shouldn't be playing a game, but, oh well, whatever. Uh, I want to toss it out there, maybe encourage some people to give it a go, because it works, you can do it, you don't have to cheat, you don't have to have modded aerodynamics to make it easier, like near or far or whatever, you don't have to hyper-edit, you don't have to turn on infinite fuel, you don't have to get out and push. If you are efficient with your burns and efficient with your maneuvering and have half a brain with you, because I only have half a brain myself, you can do this. It's possible. I am definitely not a super duper pro KSP player. So if I can do it, there's a whole lot of you out there that can. So give it a try. And if you screw up, just figure out where it is that you screwed up and try again. You learn through failure, not through success. So hope that encourages some folks and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.